So let's take a moment to talk about what it was that real that Harry Hess saw in the seafloor that really showed him that the seafloor was indeed in motion. So as we've learned, as new igneous rocks come up, they're going to record polar position. So as we've also learned, in the seafloor, we have these things called divergent boundaries. Right? Well, we're going to really learn the name for that in the next chapter. But what we see are those ridges. Right? So here we have an MOR, right? a mid-oceanic ridge. And in the mid-oceanic ridge, we know we have hot igneous material, right? hot magma working its way up. And as it comes up, right, in through here, it's going to push each plate in the opposite direction. Well, this was Harry Hess's theory, but he needed some proof, right? He needed to see something here that showed him that indeed these plates were in motion. Now, of course, today we know these plates are in motion because we can monitor them with satellites. The same satellites that you use is for GPS. Harry Hess did not have that luxury, right? So instead, what he did is he took a look at these mid-oceanic ridges. And very specifically, he took a look at the magma, right? The lava that was in there. So he, take, he took a look and saw that indeed when he looked at the rock, right, it's going to point towards north, just like we talked in our last Let's Take a, take a Moment. Now, as we've also learned, okay, We've also learned that the magnetic poles can also switch polarity. So let's talk about that for a second. So we know that we have the North Pole and the South Pole. And we know all that is is a movement of charge. Right? We have positive going one direction, negative going a different direction. Right? We have this movement of charge. Well, sometimes what can happen is our poles can reverse charge. So instead of saying the South becoming negative, it's positive. And the North saying today it's negative, then become right positive, then becomes negative. So instead, what we have is a flow of charge that's going in the opposite direction. Well, when that happens, let's say you were to have a compass, what you would see is today we know as the South Pole, it would actually record as the North. Or as what looks like the North Pole today would actually be South, the South Pole right, on your compass. Now that doesn't mean that the Earth flips upside down, right, it doesn't, it stays there. It's just the charges flip-flop, okay. So that goes to show us, right, that this can happen. Now, what's interesting is our rocks are going to record that. So let's say originally, right, we have our rocks and they're going to record north there. Well now if we have a new segment of rocks, let's say after, right, the magnetic reversals happen, going to point to north down there. So we can see this in our rocks, what we call these, these magnetic reversals. So what um, Hess did is he took a look in the seafloor itself. So let's say here we have a segment of seafloor. And here's our mid-oceanic ridge. What he saw is he saw those magnetic reversals. So let's say here's a positive so here's a negative. So positive is today, today's polarity, where north is north and south is south. And let's say negative okay, is reverse polarity. So when he looked at the mid-oceanic ridge, he saw, now this is really important, he saw that there was a symmetry. Right? Symmetry means mirror image. So you see a positive here and a positive here. Negative, negative. Positive, positive. And it wasn't just with this pattern, it was with the width. Right? This width is equal to this width. And this width is equal to this width. Well, Harry Hess thought, now wait a minute. How can we explain this? How can we have something that's symmetrical about the mid-oceanic ridge? That's when it dawned on Harry Hess that the seafloor has to be in motion. And the center of that motion has to be our mid-oceanic ridge. 
So let's take a look at this picture to see what that means. So here, in our first diagram, right, two million years ago, we have our mid-oceanic ridge right there. And you can see as it starts to open, we've got that symmetry. So this means, right, at this point, at one point in time, this positive and this positive were together at the mid-oceanic ridge. And as it spread, all right, so let's say here's that initial positive and there's our mid-oceanic ridge. As it spread, it took half of that positive and forced it that way and half of that positive and forced it in that direction. So it literally split that layer in half. And you can see that right here, okay, with this layer. So here we have two negatives, right? So two reverse polarities that form all at the same time. Well, as that magma, right, that hot magma works its way up there, it forces the plate to split in half. So now we see that half is located here and half is located there. So it takes that layer and it literally splits it in half. Here we can see the same thing, right? When we have this big negative layer right, that forms at once, that hot magma comes in here and it forces that layer to split in half. And here we can see half of that negative is there and half is there. So what is important? Your takeaway message here, okay, that the magnetic symmetry, magnetic reversal symmetry, at the mid-oceanic ridge is only explained by C4 spreading. This right here is what showed Harry Hess that the C4 has to be in motion. So this is incredibly important. Without seeing this symmetry, we would not have known until we developed the satellites that do your GPS that the C4 was actually in motion. So this is an incredibly important discovery that Harry Hess made.